Yes! Big barrel. They're not a fucking barrel. Can't believe it. Yeah. It's absolutely shark. That was a big shark. Look at this. I am Portsmouth crab. Another good crab. Big muddies. Woo! Nice little red. Look at that. Oh yeah. Something big here. Big one. Go. Nice pretty. First good blue bone. First little trout. The size of this one. Fuck yeah. Look at it. Look at that. Fucking sick. Woo! Hey guys, how are we all? Uh, welcome to another episode of Ocean Addict. Um, today I'm heading out the back streets, uh, heading right out to some of the more remote crabbing spots. Um, probably taking a good two hours four-wheel driving to get out here. Um, haven't crabbed out here for about five years. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, some of my old holes are around and a few new ones. But uh, really windy today, so Thought I'd head up, head down these tracks, try these spots. Some of the local hardcore will know where I am, but uh, I'm definitely not going to see anyone else out here while I'm crabbing. So we're heading out across all these plains and down these tracks. It's a bit like uh, the old safari country out in Africa out here. Um, one of my favourite spots. When I didn't have a boat, I just used to uh, walk around here all the time and um chase jacks in the holes and the crabs and chase a bower and just general uh wandering around i was a lot more fit back then but probably up for about four or five k today which i don't mind and um we'll keep you posted and hopefully get you some uh good crab footage all right guys uh, here's my crabbing kit crab hook bag to put the crabs in Bag, definitely need water. Plastic bag for your keys, for your phone. And just in case, decent sized knife, you never know. You definitely want to take a phone or something with you just in case something happens. All right, let's get out and wander. I have to cross some uh, little uh, deserts, some long stretches to get to the other side of the creek. And uh, there's not, too much sense to crabbing it's sort of you want to find creeks that have sort of banks on them so the crabs are actually able to build their holes in the banks uh, you won't find a lot of crab holes on the flat ground or in bashing into the mangroves which is a good thing because they're so hard to get into so it's more of uh, just getting lucky and picking the right area and I find that probably half of my crabs come from under or in between oyster rocks and you'll see a lot of these oyster rocks on these islands that i'm standing on um, sometimes the crabs is looking for any sort of protection uh, either out of the wind or out of sight or a nice little dark spot they can really just be in really small holes too that you wouldn't think maybe only just the width of the crab and you'll go in sideways and just sort of sit out in there and uh, wait out the next tide there you go, made it through. There is a there is a croc, a reported croc in this system, about three meters at the moment. So you won't see me uh, swimming or wading across any water or hanging around in dirty, murky pools and things like that. But uh, this area is like one of the one of only a handful of spots where you can actually crab without the risk of crocodiles everywhere um it's quite sandy more than muddy and the water's quite clear which uh crocs don't like which doesn't mean they won't be there just that means they might not be there in the same amount of numbers this is a uh, absolutely pristine country um it just things i love about this spot is you just don't see any rubbish no broken glass or fishing line or anything like that and every little pool even every little puddle that I walk past is just full of life and little creatures and baby fish and crabs and ockies and mullet. It's uh, just really, you really do notice the more you get out of town, the more life you see everywhere to, you know, really show what it really was like before people come. Here we go, folks. Found one. And just wedged up in there in the rock. Sitting right out in the open. My mission today was to uh, get a crab for my mate Paul, who uh, helps me out with all, the, all my editing. 
stuff like that for my videos to help me get to what I'm doing so he said he's after a mud crab so this one looks like it's got his name written all over it I reckon oh well we'll pull him out There we are Paul, that one's you mate. Nice purple crab. Nice and heavy, nice and full. Nice and tanned underneath, good male. Oh, well, that's just to thank um, Paul for all his help with my uh, YouTube videos. Uh, he's a local in Broome, really helped me to put it together and sort of encouraged me to keep going with this. Um, last time I talked to him he said, oh, all I want is one of those mud crabs. So, here we are mate, um, nice muddy for ya, woo! Go. In the Hessian bag. Search this last little creek here. Oh, you wouldn't believe it, there's one right there. Look, sitting under those little sticks right there. See him? Look at him. Oh, good crab. Big buck by the look of it. Look at him. Not even in a hole, just sitting there. Sitting there waiting for us. When they're in the hole, the key is to either get them behind the shell or around one of their arms like that and then drag him in got hold of that tree there he is there we are another nice port smith muddy there we are we find one just down from the bloody big buck we find him just down from buddy just down from the boat ramp believe it or not hiding in there not even a hole an old tree root sitting underneath be a good good 18 across the shell nice and heavy the old coals bag they do the trick Oh well, it's all come together at the end. You're happy with that? You don't get much bigger than that. That's a good crab. Good kilo, kilo and a half crab. All right, guys, well, there we go. We've got a couple more crabs. That's probably another episode of Ocean Addict. Uh, hope you guys like. If you guys are really liking these, make sure you hit the like button, thumbs up, um, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, the more subscribers I can get, the more... Uh, I can put this content out for you guys and uh, really showcase what the Kimberley has to offer, uh, which I think a lot of people don't really realize how good the place is in the Kimberley. Um, everyone I talk, talk to just spins out about how it looks and the fish that come out of here and it really is still a pristine environment. And hopefully uh, we can try to keep it that way by managing our fish and crabs and everything our stocks for the future and really embracing catch and release cheers